Okay. And once we know how we can apply CSS to our React project, now let's talk about images. And I can tell you right away that it's an optional video. Technically, if you don't want to follow along, you don't have to. But again, it's the case where I'm getting questions about it in the course Q and A. So I just thought that it's very useful if I showcase everything step by step. And essentially, when it comes to images, we have three options. We have external images that are hosted on a different server. Please keep something in mind. This image is hosted on a different server. So Amazon essentially is providing this asset. So we're not doing anything. We just take this URL and we provide it for our image tag. And you can definitely take this URL and you'll see that this is the image. So hopefully that is clear. That's our first option. So let's say when we'll be serving our data from our own database or getting some external API, if there's going to be an asset, for example, image asset, then there's always going to be a URL that points back to some kind of external server. So that's our first option. Pretty straightforward, correct? Just provide the URL and we're good to go. And after that, we have two options for local images. One in the public folder, which we're going to cover in this video, but since it's less performant, it's not something we're going to implement in our projects. And then we have local images in the source folder, which is a better solution for assets since under the hood, they get optimized. So throughout the course, we'll stick with the source folder if we have local images. But since we haven't covered the imports and exports and all that, and since we'll have to utilize ES6 modules for that, for now, we'll just put it on hold. But since I want you to be aware of this option of public folder, even though it's not something we're going to implement since it's less performant, in this video, I'll show you how we can set it up. Again, I'm getting questions in course Q&A, so I might as well cover everything step by step. And essentially, the steps are following. We want to save the image. It can be any image, but of course, I'll use same image. We want to create a images folder in public. Now, technically, you don't have to, again, create the folder. But since in most cases, you'll have multiple assets for your project, it kind of makes sense to set up the folder structure. As long as that image is in a public, it's going to be available. So keep in mind, technically, you don't have to have the images folder. And then we want to copy and paste the image we downloaded. We want to rename it. Now, that's totally optional, but in my case, I'll do that. And then in the source where we have the image tag, we want to replace the URL. So instead of the external one, we'll use the internal one. And in the process, you'll see that pretty much any asset we add to the public is right away publicly available. Hopefully that makes sense. So in my case, I know that I'm going to call this book one. And in the source notice, I'm going to go forward slash images because it's in the folder. If it wouldn't be in the folder, then of course, I would just go with dot forward slash and then the file name and then book and the full extension. So let's try this one out. I'm going to navigate here. I believe I can actually get it from the source as well. But just to showcase that, of course, we can get it from the entire list. Let's navigate here. Notice the save image as option. And I'm going to go right away over here. And I'm going to say book and one. Let's save the file. Now it's on a desktop. I want to navigate to my desktop. I'm going to open up my project. Okay, then very important, we want to place this in a public so not in the source, The source option will cover later, we want to go with images, then we want to drag and drop this sucker here. And then this one over here. And once it's available, you'll actually notice if you take the URL. Now, again, in my case, the name is following. But if you use different name, then of course, you need to use that one. If you take here this forward slash and add it to your localhost 3000, you'll see that 
right away it's available. So I have this localhost 3000. So that's the server that I'm working with. Notice if we copy and paste the full path, so images and then book and whatever extension, if I press here, notice this is going to be my image. So whatever we place in the public right away is publicly available. And what that means is that we can also use it in our code. So now we just want to navigate back to index.js. And instead of this external URL, we want to go dot forward slash, then images, and then book one on the extension. So essentially, whatever we place over there is immediately available in our code, as well as in the browser. Again, the reason why this is not a popular option is because these assets don't get optimized. So later when we'll place our assets in the source folder under the hood, they get optimized. And therefore, the end result is better. Our application is faster. But yes, you also have an option to put your assets in the public and then access them in a code or provide them in the browser. And lastly, I just want to showcase that if you go back to your project and again, inspect the elements, you'll see now that the path, URL path actually goes back to our own server. And notice again, this is going to be the full path localhost. So that's our server, then images, and then book one. So since the image, the asset is on the same server, we don't need to go with the full URL. Essentially, we just need to set up a path that is relative to our public folder. Hopefully it's clear. And up next, let's talk about CSS in JSX.